on air. Starting start broadcast. We're live. Here we go. We're on the air. Hey, hey, hey. how's it going, everybody? Welcome. This is Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to Thursday, February the 21st. No, Thursday, February the 22nd, 2018. How about that? Time flies when you're demonetized. <laughs> I'm still demonetized, uh, waiting for YouTube to put us back on. Uh, they told me a couple of days ago, uh, those of you who are following me, we hit a thousand subs the other day, we thought we were through the worst of it, and we're still waiting for um, the official word that we've been approved for monetization again, but we've been off since the evening of the 20th, so uh, this will be 48 hours coming up, uh, about three or four hours after this broadcast. So uh, that's what's going on with my channel. I'm working for free, except for the tip jar, which some of you have noticed and uh, some of you actually have contributed to. And I thank you because it's my only source of income. There's a tip jar. There's a dollar sign at the bottom of your uh, chat box over here on your computer, wherever you're watching me from. And if you want to, you can make a donation to me by hitting the dollar sign and entering any amount you want. One dollar, two dollars. I had a couple of $5 donations. I had a $5 donation yesterday and a five British pound donation. That's, we call that big money around here. <laughs> and I thank both of you for that. Um, but hopefully I'll be re-monetized in a couple of days, maybe uh, maybe tomorrow or the day after. I don't know how long this is gonna take. I don't know about how many other YouTubers were demonetized along with me. I know it's huge. It might be like a million channels. These are the channels that were not uh, sitting on a thousand subscribers or four thousand hours of watch time when YouTube announced their new policy, but we did make it into the group uh, before the deadline, uh, and now we're waiting for the review to just go through, and we'll be re re monetized again. I, I don't know. I, it's 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 quirky, but it's weird being de being monetized since October, being demonetized in January when in October I only had ten thousand sub views. And now I have a thousand subscribers and 120,000 views and 11,000 hours of watch time. So <laughs> what, what do you do? But a lot of channels tried to make it and couldn't. Uh, there are a lot of folks who are trying to raise the, uh, the bar to get to a thousand subscribers and then get their hours. And either one or the other, they fell short. And um, I've talked to you folks about how many, how many YouTubers I think were cheating and just trying to do sub for sub games. And I think these folks are going to get their subscriptions uh, or, or subscriber accounts re revised and they'll be kind of loaded back to sort of where they came from once they reverse all of these sub for sub nonsense deals. But that's just me speculating. They don't call me. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Traveling with Bruce. <clears throat> that's my little rant and rave about uh, YouTube and what's going on there. Uh, when I went off the air yesterday, I had a 1,073 subscribers, which is just, thank you, unbelievable. Right now. 1091 i'm zooming in on 1100 subscribers fantastic that means i'll add um, i've added uh, 140 subscribers since the um the 19th when i did this telecast on that infamous day that uh, i was begging for subscribers to get over a thousand that day we've added 140 since then it's just just incredible uh to think that my first hundred took me four months to get the first hundred, and here I'm getting the next hundred and fifty in uh, two and a half, three days. Unbelievable! The difference is just, just, just amazing. And I'm still a tiny little YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm being discovered all around. Uh, more and more people are finding me. I'm getting a lot of comments. I want to thank all you viewers out there who are commenting to me. I'm hoping, hope I've been able to address uh, your questions. Uh, a lot of you are new cruisers, and you're curious about going on a cruise for the first time. And boy, I welcome those questions, of course. Um, and uh, what was I gonna say also? I just something just clicked in and then it clicked out. Uh, the new subscribers, the new comments, the newbies that are coming along, new subscribers that are telling me that they're a first time cruiser and they really find my channel informative. And I thank you very much for that. I'm looking to produce new videos shortly that I'll uh, bring out. It's gonna be shorter videos to sort of uh, cover a lot of the points we talk about on these live streams to kind of give you quick recaps of, uh, of sort of some of the topics we've covered. I'll come to you with a topic of the day and uh, 20 minutes into the show, I'll get such an interesting question from a subscriber or from a viewer that oh, we're just going off on a tangent over here and we're covering all kinds of ground that I never thought we would. And uh, I'm kind of looking to put together some videos to sort of cover these 
these kinds of points in, in a concise five, seven, eight minute format. Because uh, I get a few folks who say to me, I don't have an hour and a half to watch your show every day to find out your latest uh, information. But uh, can you help me with that? So uh, we're, we're, I'm looking at ways to sort of you know speed things up and do that. But this these live streams will continue. I love doing these. These I find very entertaining and enjoying. Enjoying, and I think you do you do too. If you're new to this channel, traveling with Bruce, I talk about cruise ship vacations, going traveling, getting deals on cruises, what you can do in a cruise, what you can't do in a cruise, what you can bring on board. Uh, should you buy a drink package? Shouldn't you? What about specialty restaurants? Uh, we talk about stuff we're hearing about uh, on cruise ships. New cruise ships coming out. New new uh, features on cruise ships uh, we, we do it all we talk about it all and it's an engaging uh i think a fun uh, hour hour and 20 minutes goes by real fast uh if you've never uh, signed in before you can sign in and say hi to me like everyone else is tell me what your high temperature is today here where i am i'm in creston british columbia here in canada i'm three miles north of the uh, uh idaho border coeur d'alene it's just two hours 20 minutes by car i can be at the coeur d'alene uh costco in two hours, 20 minutes, uh, and get me some of that cheap American gasoline for my car. <laughs> Up here, I pay um, about five fifty a gallon Canadian, and in Coeur d'Alene, I can buy a gallon of gas for about $3.60, two bucks a gallon, cheaper, two hours away by car, and I get 40 plus miles a gallon in my car, so I don't burn much gas to go get it. It's it's unbelievable. Plus, I'm at Costco. I get the dollar fifty hot dog. How can I beat that? And I love the chicken bake down there. And then, of course, if you get a, a Sunday, uh, Costco Sunday in in the United States, you, you get it in a cup like that. You get like a ten ounce cup full of the yogurt and the berry berry. In Canada, you get like a six inch six inch high cup. It's it's uh, it's like we're on a diet up here. You know, <laughs> I need my ice cream. <laughs> Anyway, today here in Creston, uh, temperature-wise, it's a gorgeous sunny day, but we're about 27 degrees, just a few degrees before below freezing. There is melting going on because the sun is at a higher angle these days. And if you're standing in the window here, my living room window, and the sun touches, beams on you, it, you feel warmth right away. It's fantastic. So it's nice to have. Uh, we're going to be plus uh, in the plus column tomorrow. We're going to be like 34, 35 degrees tomorrow with more sunshine. So we're going to have some serious meltage this next few days. Let's see who is watching and say hi to everybody. Uh, it's, we started off talking already, saying hi to everybody. Before I went on the air, I was setting up my computer here about five, six, seven minutes before airtime. Heather Young said hi to me. Pamela Jordan said hi. I started saying hi to them, and they started saying hi to each other. Uh, then Scott Batchley got into the act, and uh, we all said hi to each other. And then Richard Koromaski came in just before airtime. 48 degrees in Philly, he says. Rain for the next three days, no problems. Off to the Panama Canal cruise in three days where it's going to be in the 90s. Yes, sir. He uh, was telling us yesterday he had 80 degrees in Philly yesterday. Unbelievable weather out there. George McCrower is saying hi, everybody. It's 83 and partly cloudy in the villages in Florida. Welcome back, George. Christine is here. Hey, Bruce, everybody. 35 degrees in Coleman, with, uh, Coleman Michigan. Hi, Christine. Uh, Debbie Emanuel is here. Uh, hi to everyone. Still low 50 high today in Northern California. And I think Debbie sent me a super chat yesterday. And thank you again for that, Debbie. I appreciate it. Sherry, Sherry Ann, 1965 at yahoo.com. There's a handle. <laughs> Let's just say Sherry's here. <laughs> uh, hi there from Connecticut. It's 29 degrees and snowing after yesterday being 65. That's amazing. Wow, that, that, uh, that's crazy. Uh, we have uh, X. Xelospo, Xelospo, Xelospo. I think that's how we're going to say it. Xelospo is here. Hello. High today will be seven degrees in Tokyo. Welcome back from Tokyo, Japan. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'm in Creston, BC. It's three o'clock my time. I'm live at 5 p.m. Eastern time every day. What time is it in Tokyo right now where you're watching me from? Is it very late at night or is it very early in the morning? Uh, let us know. I'm kind of curious. Pamela Jordan, sorry to uh, to all in the north. <laughs> I had to turn on my air conditioning today. Really warm in South Carolina. <laughs> You're killing me, Pamela. You're killing me. Uh, Michaela Smith, hey, Bruce, 27 degrees in Spokane. How you doing, Michaela? You're back. Uh, Imogene Weston is saying, hey, Bruce, 70 degrees here in Houston, Texas. You got, can't beat that. 70 in Houston. Scott Derwin, hi, Bruce, one degree Fahrenheit in Haver, Haver, Haver Montana. No break in Haver, Montana. Not yet. Uh, Scott, hang in there, buddy. Uh, Scott Batchley saying, hey, Bruce, it is 59 degrees in sunny Ventura, California. It would be nicer 
if the wind would settle down, yeah. And if you guys, I think you guys need rain too, don't you? I know you need rain south of there. Uh, yeah, 59 windy is, you know, not great. Gailey S is here, my other uh, super chatter from yesterday. Thank you, Gailey S, for that donation of yours. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Minus one degree Celsius in Southport. Um, glad the numbers keep rising. They are. They're just. They're just coming. Uh, it's amazing the the the, uh, the uh, subscriptions. Uh, Sylvan uh, Sylvan Forest. Uh, hi Bruce. It's eighty four degrees in Delray Beach in the shade. Today is National Margarita Day. So here we are with rum and coke, our cigar, and watching your channel. Good times. <laughs> Look, if the rum and coke doesn't work, you can always switch to margaritas. You know, you, you gotta. You know, you gotta be flexible. Way to go, Sylvan. That's fantastic. Betsy Lane, plus one in Hamilton, she's saying. Welcome back, Betsy. Uh, Scott Batch is saying only 212 days till the new Norwegian Cruise Line Bliss is in Alaska. Can't wait. He's got a cruise book for that, I think. Heather Young, do you know anything about the new Titanic 2 cruise ship? I'm checking into that. Not ready to talk about it yet, but I'm checking into it. Uh, Thomas Arnold, 26 and ready to snow in Big Bear. Uh, more snow, the better. Get that, get that ground covered in white stuff because it'll melt into the ground. You guys need moisture up there. You've got to get those forest fire issues last year. S. Swan is here traveling to Wilmington, North Carolina, where it is 80 degrees, Sylvia. <laughs> right now, 7 a.m. in Tokyo. Okay, X, XL Law School, 7 a.m., first thing in the morning in Tokyo. And that's why our coverage of the Olympics is all screwed up all the time. We... Uh, we have to wait five, six, seven hours for the daytime hours to come around and, and for the for the events to start. Uh, fantastic. Great to have you from all the way from Tokyo. That's just awesome stuff. Uh, Glenn Latour is here. And Glenn is saying, hi, Bruce. I'm joining you from Blue Water on the shores of Lake Huron. Welcome, Glenn. You're, I think you're a first timer. And welcome to the channel. It's great to have you here. Uh, Scott Batchley saying, yes, we're still in drought conditions. Yeah, that's right. Not great. Uh, Doreen Chapman, plus 12 yesterday, minus 12 today. <laughs> when it changes, it, it it changes. There's no there's no give, is there? Unbelievable. Oh, welcome everybody so far, and anybody who's here, thank you. If anyone wants to give us a thumbs up today on our on our video, thank you very much for that too. We've been getting record thumbs ups the last uh, the last uh, couple of days on our telecasts. I know I had about two or three thumbs up before we even started today. And I say I think we've got six going so far. So thank you for all that, you guys. Uh, and any comments you have, any questions you have, just let me know. Fire them in there. Um, I was going to ask you folks uh, the question of the day. I've got one, and I came up with another one. Uh, the first question of the day, with all these cruises and all these add-on fees and charges and so on, should tipping be included in the cruise fare? Should it just be automatically included in the cruise fare and not be a separate charge that we, you know, we have to pay separately or the charge that we get at the you know on our room account we see it every day piling up or at the end of the cruise we have this separate room you know tipping fee suggested gratuity charge should it just be part of the fare and 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 what about port taxes and fees i'll even throw that in shouldn't that be part of the fare too and that way when we look at a cruise like on a website or or whatever we see a promoted fare from a cruise line instead of saying 599 and then we have to go well gee yeah but that's that doesn't include the tipping and well that doesn't include those extra port charges and fees and taxes which you can't get out of you got to pay it so i mean really that that you know it's misleading and then you're multiplying it for two people or maybe there's there's you know two adults and a teenager and i mean can't they just give us the fare everybody give us the fare with one price and then we know we can really we figure out. we know drinks are extra we know especially restaurants are extra we know if we're going to go to the spa and get a massage we know that's extra but you know, can't we just can we just do it that way? I'm wondering what your thoughts on that, folks. Uh, I, I kind of wonder sometimes. Uh, I'm always sitting in my on my couch looking at these various uh, offers, and in my brain, I'm going, "Yeah, I know it. I know it's six ninety six, but I got to factor in the tip money and then the, that. What is it? What is it really costing us? Uh, you know. So, uh, question. So, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Debbie Manuel saying, Scott Batchley, I am with you. Taking off on the same cruise in 128 days for me. Oh, she can't wait. Pamela Jordan, I think that would be a great idea. Scott Batchley is is marketing. The lower fare looks better on paper. It, yes, it's marketing. The lower fare does look better on paper, but it's misleading. We we know it's not real. We don't believe it. We we're skeptical. We're um, those of us who've been doing this a few you know several cruises. We're used to it, but for newbies, 
I think it's a sticker shock thing. Uh, I think newbies come out and go, well, you know, I was thinking of going on a cruise and I saw this great ad on, uh, you know, on the web or, you know, I was looking at whatever on the internet and then this ad popped up, this pop-up ad popped up about a carnival cruise or, or a celebrity cruise. And, oh, the picture was so nice, a cruise ship in tropical water with people snorkeling nearby. And it, it said five ninety nine. I, I thought, wow, that'd be great. And then they go to the website for the uh, cruise line because they don't know they should go to vacations to go.com or other sites. And then, you know, by the time you get into the web website of a cruise line, uh, don't you find that it's a bit of a uh, minefield of entertainment? I mean, you, you think it's so simple. You're just looking for that deal you saw a few minutes ago on the internet. You saw this offer for a five ninety nine cruise, and now you're trying to find it. You can't find it. You're in the website of the of the cruise line, and first you got to figure out well, what was the name of the ship that that thing was for, and well, where exactly was that? When exactly was that cruise, uh, and and what kind of a room are they really talking about? And and on and on go these uh, these uh, you know the, the, the skill testing questions, and you have to enter you know in the website that fill in the box here, fill in the box here. They're trying to narrow down, and by the time you find the 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 uh, you know seven day Caribbean cruise that you thought was the one you were talking about, it isn't the one you thought you saw has nothing to do with the one you saw and you can't find that 599 fare anymore and now you're finding fares for 649 732 uh, makes no sense and then you you okay well let's just pretend I'll I'll just go through the motions of trying to book a cruise and really what find out what's going on and then as you get deeper into the website it it takes you into more tangents and more little areas of the website and the next thing you know you're you're looking at four different rooms that are being offered to you and if you decide to just say well you pick the room for me it's less if you pick the room you want it's more and then you finally see the fare on the side of the page over here that says uh you know the, the fare for two people it's like twenty eight hundred dollars you're going what happened to that five ninety nine deal that I that brought me here in the first place this is crazy how many people turn off and just go away don't come back that's what I wonder with regard to these cruise lines. Are they actually shooting themselves in the foot and being inefficient about it by frustrating people who are trying to find a deal and an offer uh, on a cruise? And the next thing you know that they're just so frustrated by the whole thing and there's nothing near the price they thought they were going to pay. They thought they were going to be around $1,200 each, maybe $1,500 or $1,200 for a couple, $1,500 for a couple. And the next thing you know, the website is saying, uh, you want to put a deposit down on this cruise for $2,450? What is that? I, I really wonder uh, if that's if that's working in their best interest. Now, I will say, as we all know, uh, the cruise line business has been doing well the last number of years, and uh, cruise ships are generally pretty filled up. But there will come a point in time, won't there, where uh, that won't be the case anymore? Will there come a point in time where if we just get like one year where the cruise business doesn't grow at 5%, it only grows at 2%. Still a growth, but it's a slower growth. And that 3% of expected passengers, when we're talking about almost 30 million passengers, uh, we're talking about a million passengers that didn't show up that they thought would show up. Um, won't that make a difference on the bottom line on some of these publicly traded companies that are running cruise lines? Um, you miss out on a 1%, 2% projection of your future travel numbers or 3% drop in expected passenger counts on all those new ships that have been coming on board too. Um, that could be a, a deal breaker for Wall Street analysts and the stocks could get downgraded pretty quickly. Uh, this, you know, this, this, this can't be good. Uh, so I, I'm kind of wondering, well, don't make it so difficult to book a cruise on the internet through your own site and so frustrating for people uh, by directing them all over the place and never and never giving them the straight goods. The, the, tell me what the price of the cruise is. Really, I'm, that, this is my thought. What are your thoughts? I'm now uh, looking back here at uh, at uh, uh, at points at, at comments. Let me just check and see if I'm up to speed here. Uh, let's see. Um, that would be a great idea is Mar okay. Uh, Skyhawk is saying 79 here in Charlotte, North Carolina, but my twin, my twin brother is in Metro Detroit. He says it's only 37 degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's that dividing line. Uh, Gailey yes, saying, I agree. Imogene much prefer to pay what I like and not feel obligated. Uh, Richard Koromaski. Yes. Tipping should be included because 
Some people pull the tips off their accounts, which really hurts the workers. So if it's in, everyone gets the tips. And see, that's kind of what I'm also thinking too, that if everyone is in on the tips, the tip rate doesn't have to be so high. Uh, because right now the cruise lines are charging us 13 bucks, 14 bucks. Some want to charge 17, 50 uh, per day per person uh, because there's so many people that don't that reverse it, go to the front desk and moan about it and reduce it by half. And because it's an oblig, it's not an obligated thing. It's a, it's a non-obligated thing. And so the cruise lines are maybe factoring in that. And if, if it were the other way around, if it were part of the cruise, it was just part of the cruise. And the, the cruise lines either pay their employees more or they just automatically uh, give them a bonus based on performance. I don't know how they work it. Uh, maybe the, it would only have to be $12 a day, not 17 But that's $5 a day a person, $10 a cabin per day, seven-day cruise, 70 bucks. Thought, just a thought. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, that was Richard saying uh, if, if it was all in there, would all be, everyone would get it. George McCrower, off topic, but interesting for cruisers. For varied info about large ocean vessel operation, navigation, ship structure, safety, and more, search YouTube for uh, Jeff HK, a Mariner's blog, and subscribe. There you go. There's a recommendation for another channel. Glenn Latour, beautiful sunny day, well above freezing. Oh, good stuff, Glenn. <laughs> good to hear it. Uh, Christine is here. I planned on saving double the cost of the cruise due to all the extra charges. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doreen Chapman, cannot imagine taking off your tips. They work very hard. I, I agree. They, they, these folks are, they're working seven days a week, uh, you know, and on embarkation and debarkation day. Oh, are they ever working to get us? Out of there, cleaned up the cabin to get ready for the next group. Oh, my gosh. It is nonstop. Uh, Scott Derwood, having everything included would make it easier to compare pricing. Maybe luxury cruises, cruises aren't so expensive after all. Uh, good point. I, I agree. I think that's right. Um, I was thinking of this when I you know, dug into it further. Uh, you know, a couple of years back, way back when I started cruising, I'd, I'd noticed that, gee, and you know, I see these, uh, uh, these six-star lines, these high-end cruise lines, uh, they, they're like, you know, $250 a night, 200 bucks a night. And I'm going, oh, wow, that's out of my budget. But then I'm going, well, wait a minute, Bruce. You're paying $100 a night for this cruise over here. At least that's what they're asking. And then you got to pay $13 a night per person for the uh, tips. Then you got to pay the taxes and fees. Okay, well, maybe the other one doesn't have that either, but maybe it does. Uh, and, then, and then they've got these specialty restaurants. And if I want to go to the steakhouse at least one night for the cruise, that's 50 bucks each. And if I want to go to the Chinese thing, it's it's 35 and I want to go to the, and I'm adding it up and I'm adding it up and I'm adding it up and I'm kind of going, well, I'm, I'm inching up to 150 a night now for this cruise. I'm up, I'm up to 160 a night over here with some drinks, maybe 170 a night. And this luxury cruise is all inclusive at 200. Wait a minute. If it's only 30 bucks difference, that's $200 a week difference. I can be on a six star luxury cruise liner for $200 more than what I thought was a killer deal over here, gee, maybe I might just bite the bullet and take the leap and go over there. And I've got concierge service. There's only 900 of us on the ship. Uh, everything's included. I don't have to schlep three dozen cola on board to save an extra hundred bucks. My wife doesn't have to sneak a couple of, bottle of wine, bottles of wine on it or you know, not even sneak, just bring them on because you're allowed to. You don't have to do that anymore because they give you the wine at dinner and she can have the whatever wine she feels like today having. I kind of like this. So I, I'm wondering, hey, why don't they just include it in the price? These are thoughts. Uh, Sylvan is saying money can only be spent once. So I believe tips could be included in the cruise fare. I always tip more than the guidelines, especially my cabin attendant. See, that's what I thought too. Good point, Sylvan, because if it's included in the fare, let's say we're on a luxury line, a six-star line, and I'm in the balcony, and I've been well looked after by my steward for all the little things I like, uh, flowers in the cabin, uh, the little sculptures with the towel things on the bed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, if I slip them an extra 20 bucks uh, at the end of the cruise, knowing that they are already getting tip money because it's built into my fare, I can now give them personally an extra 20 bucks and feel great about it. Where right now I feel nickel and dined all the time on Norwegian or some of these other lines where I get these charges and charges and charges and charges. And I'm thinking, I'm going to pull out a $20 bill on top of that and give it to this guy where I've already been paid, been paying $14.50 a day times two for the whole thing and all these other charges. I'm getting a little frustrated by all this, this needling and this little, eh, eh, eh. 
Uh, it's like mosquito bites. Uh, I'm wondering, just, just give me the price. Just tell me what it is. Uh, I can compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges, what cruise line does what and what charges what, so I can compare. Time is precious. Uh, I was thinking of that, Sylvain. Pamela Jordan said, uh, if it, it was all included, there wouldn't be any surprises when you get the final price and then have to pay gratuities on top of that. It, exactly. Uh, you know, you're trying to budget your life. And um, I don't want to wait to the last minute to find out, oh, my goodness, my credit card is going to get nailed. $1,250 more. And I thought it would be about four or 500 Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's the thing with these extra charges, right? Um, I, I kind of wonder about that. Uh, Richard Kormaski saying, Bruce, as you know, cruise prices change like airlines, sometimes on a daily basis. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they do change cruise prices sometimes daily, <clears throat> especially in the last, say, 120 days down to the last 30 days. They really can really fluctuate quickly. But uh, if it's an all-in pricing, uh, then they can still they could still do that. But what I don't want to have to figure out is the all-in pricing. What is the all-in pricing every time the price changes by 20 30 50 80 dollars uh, cause I've got to kind of factor this in on, Oh, there's this offer for a discount or there's an in cabin, like there's a, a room credit for $125, which I know is only $62 50 cents per person because it's for the cabin, not for each passenger. And so now I'm doing this minus these negative amounts, the positive amounts on the tipping and the, and the taxes and the fees, and then especially the restaurant, and there's a drink package, maybe, maybe not. And then there, I'm a shareholder of the company, so there's that discount. And, and I'm just I'm just playing with numbers all the time. I'm not looking at the itinerary. I'm not looking at the quality of the room. I'm not looking at the uh, the uh, highlights of the ship. I'm, on, I'm just thinking numbers, 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 numbers. And I'm getting tired after three or four of these cruises doing that, and I stop looking. <laughs> I, I now watch TV for a half an hour, let my brain mush back to Mushville, and I'm not doing my homework about doing cruises, getting going on a cruise and finding a good deal because it's getting too complicated. I, I'm, what, is this by design? Are the bean counters going, ah, the psychological where things are working? We've hired all these experts and we figured out how to confuse our passengers. And it gets to the point where they eventually just give up and they say, oh, the hell with it. I just want to go on a cruise. I'll just hit the button and I'll pay for it and I'll be done with it because this is our master plan to never show them the real price of the cruise. We'll just fool them into believing that they got a good deal and we'll entice them into our website on this $5.99 special and we'll, we'll get them at the end. I, I don't think that's the way it should be done to you. I don't think that's really right. I, I, I kind of like a cruise line that says, Bruce, the price of the cruise is this much money. That works out to so much a day. This is what you get. Boom, 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 boom. Includes, includes, includes. I love reading stuff like that. I get all excited about reading stuff like that. I see that I get a soda package. I get the premium coffee package included in my fare. It's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. You get all this to brag to me about how great this cruise is. Make me feel pumped up and jazzed up. Why don't you get me so excited that when I go to work tomorrow, okay, not me, because I work here at the home, but let's say <laughs> I'm working in an office or at a, you know, at a factory somewhere. I'm working with a bunch of friends of mine, teachers and associates, people I know. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what I did last night? My wife and I booked a cruise on Cruise Line X and we got a really good deal for only $948 each. We got a cruise to blah, blah, blah. And it includes and this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. And all we have to worry about paying extra for is if we want to go to the expensive steakhouse or if we want to go on a shore excursion that is $150 over here or a scuba diving excursion or going to see some whales over here. That's extra stuff. But we got for our cruise. Our cruise is all figured out. It's all done. We can now budget for this. It's six months from now, and we're going to save <laughs> knowing that at the end of the cruise, we don't have a $2,000 bill showing up that my friends had a year ago when they were on a cruise. They were really surprised at the bill that they got in their room that just blew them away. Isn't that, wouldn't that be more positive for the cruise lines, more uplifting uh, for the cruise lines, where people are positively talking about the cruise they're going to take and their friends at work are even more jealous. To me, I, I think that's the way you market, uh, one positive way to market a cruise. Anyway, just thoughts. Uh, let's see what else we're saying here. Doreen Chapman on Celebrity. 
you can get prepaid gratuities as one of your perks or prepaid before you leave. Depending on the cruise, you're absolutely right, Doreen. I was looking at some of those today. Uh, Glenn Latour, they already charge for gratuities. Tips should be at the discretion of the cruiser. I never use the dining room, so I don't uh, want my tips to go there, but uh, go there, but to the people who directly affect me. Um, that's a good point, Glenn. Uh, it's a good point, but if it's an all-inclusive cruise, it's an all-inclusive price. It's it's always been that way, uh, you know, in the old days where choose to go on uh, one part of the ship or not. It's up to you. Your favorite dining is somewhere else. Great for you. But if it's all inclusive, everyone's getting a portion of the tip money anyway. In other words, the, the cruise line can raise the wages for these folks. And that includes tipping as all as part of, a you know, their compensation package. And <clears throat> the, the <laughs> excuse me, the employee who's uh, who's doing your, making your bed, the employee that's vacuuming the hall. The employee that's washing their dishes downstairs, who you'll never meet in person, you're never going to see that person. The the sous chef, the prep chefs, you know, the folks who are making our meals that they aren't the chefs with the nice white hats. These are the folks of the grunts downstairs, the dishwashers. All these folks are getting a higher wage because the cruise line has just made it an all-inclusive deal. And now the, the, the employee knows every month or every two weeks, this is how much money you're getting. It's just a guarantee. This is your, it's like a new age. And they know they can send home this much every two weeks and not have to worry about it. Because you might be a good tipper uh, that uh, frequents a certain part of the ship. The next guy that takes your cruise is a miser and doesn't leave a tip at all. And the folks at the bar or the folks at, uh, at the spa or you know wherever they are, and I'm talking about uh, spa may be the wrong way to go. Thinking about folks who get tips on a, on a regular basis, they know what they're getting. Where right now, they don't know how much they're getting. It fluctuates per cruise, and they get their statement at the end of the month. I don't even know how they do it, and it, it tells them how much they're getting, and it fluctuates every cruise. It, it depends. Where if it's built in, it's built in. Now I have to say though, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's if it's built in, um, and the ship is at 100% capacity. People would get employees in this case would get more if the if it's built in, but the ship is only at ninety five percent capacity versus last month it was at a hundred. They'd get less. So I can see still there would be fluctuations based on the volume on the ship, but uh, it would be a, a lot more predictable, I would think, than maybe a good tipper and a bad tipper or a non tipper. I, I, I'm I'm not exactly sure, but these are thoughts. Uh, Richard, uh, see comment above uh, tips for everyone because that's how they make money, not on wages. Pamela Jordan, very good point on tips, Richard. I can't imagine not ripping those people who work so hard for so little money. We always give extra on top of set gratuities. Yeah, there you are. Uh, Richard Kormaski, besides, what, what is 15 bucks a day on a cruise that you're paying, that you're paying so much? Uh, Demi Manuel, I prepay gratuity and pay extra for my room stewards during the cruise. I uh, never seem to eat in the same restaurants or in main dining rooms, so not having the same servers. Uh, very itchy. Never seen the same restaurants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rich Gailey, yes. I have found that Bruce not only on a. I found that Bruce not only on a cruise, but with fights too. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you meant there. <laughs> Anna EP is here. Hi, I'm late. It's about 70 and rainy in Honolulu today. Hi, Anna. How you doing today? Uh, tell me, Anna, uh, what time is it where you are? Uh, New York, it's 5.30. Where I am, it's 3.30. Uh, what, what, how early is it for you? Are you about four or five hours behind us? Be kind of curious. Touchdown 821. The cruise line should pay more to the employees and eliminate the tipping, even if it means raising fares. I don't want to be nickel and dime when I'm on vacation. See, the, see there you go. And um, I was thinking also, when we go on, a, if, if any of us go on a, a all-inclusive resort, in Cancun, Mexico, or in uh, Cozumel, or in uh, uh, you know uh, Grenada, or uh, Dominica, Dominican Republic, if we're on a uh, on a uh, all inclusive uh, vacation, uh, the tips are all built in, are they not? Uh, they don't charge extra daily rates for tip fees. Um, the drink packages uh, usually they have a standard drink package, or they might offer a premium. Uh, type drink package in an all-inclusive resort where you will, you know, can get the Chevis Regal Scotch, uh, you know, every hour you can have another shot or two of that, um, as opposed to the regular bar scotch. I don't know. Um, but I don't think they have that as extra tipping. I think that's uh, that's already included in your deal. 
Uh, and if it's a three star, four star or five star resort, you see the prices from the charter company. If you're you know, out of Canada, of course, we have uh, Sunwing vacations and we have uh, WestJet holidays and Air Canada vacations and all these other brand names that are out there. Uh, Thomas Cook Travel and so on. Uh, from the UK, you've also got charters uh, for all-inclusive resorts. And it, it, I think it just comes with a price. There's a price that includes airfare. It includes the accommodation, the meals and your drinks and everything on that resort for that one or two or whatever weeks you're doing it for. On the cruise line, it's it's now becoming nickel and diming, nickel and diming, nickel and diming, nickel and diming, extra, 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 extra. I think it's wearing on us. I, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, what what are your thoughts? Um, let's see. Touchdown. Uh, the cruise should be more. Yeah. Uh, Sherman Mercer, 77 degrees in our Angleton, Texas, Angleton, Texas. Uh, and we appreciate the the staff and tip to make up for the hard work at low pay. Uh, we do the prepay and tip more to those who are good workers. Yeah. You know, there's there's always uh, um, there's all, that always makes good sense. To want to slip an extra five, ten, twenty, whatever dollars to somebody who's just gone above and beyond, uh, looking after you, of course. And and on a, even in an all inclusive resort, you know, if you've got a if you've got an, a, someone looking after you at an all inclusive resort that just goes above and beyond, you slip them a few extra bucks in cash. That goes a long way for these people. They really, really appreciate it. And and we've talked about this too about on a cruise right now. If you're on a cruise ship and you've prepaid gratuities. And you bought a drink package, and you're on the pool deck, and um, you order a rum and coke, uh, like my friend, my friend Sylvan might do with a cigar. You order a rum and coke, uh, and the server brings that to you, and uh, you slip them a, a, a one dollar U.S. one dollar bill or two singles uh, as a little cash tip. First of all, uh, let's get this straight: you've already prepaid a tip for that drink. It's inside the drink package. Uh, but now you're slipping this server a couple of bucks for bringing you that drink. Uh, do you think that that server is going to be too picky about the fact that, well, you're only allowed to order a drink every 30 minutes, and it's been 28 minutes. You're going to have to wait two more minutes. Uh, I think they're going to come by and be proactive about it. They're going to say, you seem to be down to about a third of a drink, sir. <laughs> Would you like another? <laughs> and you may find that the next one is a little stronger or has that lime that you wanted or you know you, you you'd rather have the rum and coke in a tall glass because you'd like to have a little more soda in your or you like to have light on the ice or however you like it well they're gonna make sure you get it the way you want it each and every time because if you can slip them a, a single you know here and there this makes a big difference to these folks they're already getting a tip to serve you anyway but this makes it even more special your uh, your deck chair uh that little table beside your deck chair you had you know you had a cheeseburger from the cheeseburger stand over there and it's you, you finish the burger it, that empty plate's gone it, it disappeared you haven't got a chance to, to wave and have it taken away it's gone your server's going to be all over you and uh you you want some snacks or you want some you want something for all you know if they can bring you anything else they'll just take care of you Makes for a nice cruise. Uh, not a bad deal. Uh, the steaming beans says Bruce is getting hyper. <laughs> oh, no. Crystal Johnson. Hi, Mr. Hello, Mr. Bruce. Hi, Crystal. How are you? Nice to have you here. The steaming bean, 142 days until my cruise to Bermuda on the escape. Promise not to step on any thongs. Be careful about the thong stepping. Don't get involved in thong stepping. It could lead to an incident. <laughs> Paula K. Hi, Bruce. 40 and rainy in Hanover. It's Pennsylvania. Good day for a glass of vino and a Bruce show. Cheers. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Nice to have you here. Paula K, we always throw a tip on first day. Get the best service all week. There you know, there you go too. It's this is called uh, pre uh, this is called proactive tipping. I think that's a good term. Proactive tipping. You tip up front like that and oh, they are there for you. Big time. Big time. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, some of these folks who are working full time on these ships are making about 150, 200 bucks a week. You're slipping them a $20 bill as a little, hi, how are you? Uh, you know, let's have a good cruise together. Oh my God, that's 10% of their wage. That's massive. That's just, <laughs> they're going to be, what do you want? How can I help you? Uh, are you happy? Are you happy? Yes, you're going to be happy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sherman Mercer is saying, when we plan a cruise, we always purchase onboard cash 
to use for specialty coffee, a specialty dining or spa stuff. If we have money left on our card, we cash it out uh, at the casino. Very good. Uh, the steaming bean. I would feel so guilty if I waved the gratuity. I am frugal, but not cheap. Yeah, I, I, to me, it's a, it's a moral. It's morals. I think it's, I think it's uh, just immoral to do that, to take it away. I really I have a tough time uh, doing it. I'd rather complain, having tipped them, and go to the front desk and complain about something, but having tipped them. I, I feel the right for that. I just, I just it gets me. I'm a, maybe I'm too much of a first-worlder, not a third-worlder. Uh, maybe that's why I'm not a billionaire. If I were a billionaire, maybe I'd be the ultimate cheapskate. <laughs> you never know. Uh, maybe that's it. Uh, <laughs> Steaming Bean uh, said that. Elizabeth Breen is saying, I'm a hairdresser. I live off of tips, and I pay way more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my daughter, uh, a little quick story about my daughter. I've mentioned this before. She was in university. She's now 30. When she was in university, she was working for tips. She was she was uh, getting minimum wage and then working for tips at a, at a, a club in, in Calgary. And um, and she would get she would get tips from the members whenever she served them. And then she worked at a, a restaurant, like a bar restaurant, uh, outside of the club, just a regular old restaurant. And uh, she would comment to us about you know some of the tips. She would get we'd get like the daily tip story, you know, what happened today. <laughs> and she would tell us about the the cheapskates, you know, the table of four it left her five dollars or two bucks on a on a hundred dollar tab. And then uh, others who just walked out and didn't give her anything. And then there were those who gave her a $20 tip for a $5 drink, you know, unbelievable. Um, uh, so we'd hear that, we'd hear that all the time. So when she, when we'd go out, when my, my wife and I and our daughter would go out for a bite to eat somewhere, the, 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 bill, the bill would come. And I would look at her and I'd say, uh, the tab is, uh, you know, $42. What kind of a tip should I leave her or him? And uh, it, in her, her mind, minimum 20%, minimum, nothing less. Because she knows just the slaving that goes on for that person. We don't see it. We see the waiter and waitress come to our table. That's it. We don't see the stuff in the back. Plus the fact that in a regular restaurant, the waiter and the waitress, they have to pay to the owner of the restaurant a portion of the uh, the, the fee, the, the, the bill. If the bill is uh, 40 bucks, the uh, restaurant is expecting that server to get a 15% tip on average. They're just expecting it. And so she's got to cough up a portion of a 15% gr gratuity that may or may not come her way for the kitchen staff, the bar staff, the uh, folks at the front of the table, the folks that sit you down. And so she's, she's on the hook for a $6 tip. There has to be a $6 tip coming in and she has to give up maybe a third of it. She says to cough up two bucks. So by the time she comes to our table to, to take our order, She's hoping for at least a $2 tip from us because that money isn't hers. That's going to the staff in the back, whether we give it to her or not. And so if we give her a $5 tip, she only makes three bucks. The other two goes to the staff because she obviously didn't perform well enough to get enough of a tip from us. I found that to be quite surprising. Anyway, that was that's a Canadian, a Canada story. Don't know if that's industry-wide, but that that's true up here. Um, Betsy Lane is saying Region 7 Cs. Uh, all inclusive, no extra, no extra charge. Uh, Richard Kormaski, Bruce, I always tip the room attendant as soon as we get into the room, first meeting them. You will be surprised how good they are, how good they take care of you, rather than waiting for the end of the cruise to tip. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because they don't know. They they have no idea all week long. Are you just grinding them and grinding them and grinding them for service, 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 and then you just leave. Because you know they got their, you know they they the, the person in the cabin figured, well I, I paid thirteen fifty every day for each of us for the tip. That's more than enough for these guys. Well, it could be, it could be more than enough. But if they really, uh, you know, giving you service, they really do deserve more at the end. But I'll tell you, if you give it to them at the beginning, oh, give them ten bucks on the first day, or ten twenty bucks on the first day and twenty bucks on the last day. Oh man, you are ma you're making such a difference in their lives. You really are, and. The, the, their faith in humanity has been restored. <laughs> You've taken care of 10 people that stiffed them, I guess. I don't know. Anna EP, it's 1230 in Honolulu. Uh, we don't change our clocks, so we are two hours before Pacific time now, and we'll be three hours when you guys all spring ahead. So, uh, yeah, you're three hours behind me because here in Creston, we don't change either. Right now, I'm two hours behind New York time. And uh, in the spring, I'll be three hours behind New York time because we don't move. Some of us don't move. So a lot of us do. Gailey S. Mm, yes, when you put it that way, tips should be built into the price 
and then tip extra when you feel you want to. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I, 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 I just um, I would rather that be the standard among all cruise lines so that for us as consumers, we're comparing apples to apples because right, right now, if we're looking at Cunard, I think they're charging as low as $12 a day and, and up depending on your room class. Whereas Royal Caribbean, it's like fourteen fifty and up per day per person, um, and then on Holland America, it's a different price, and and over here it's a different. It varies all over the place, and I'm I'm playing these mathematical calculations all the time, trying to figure out the value of a cruise, and I'm getting frustrated by it because I know about all the other charges that I'm going to get hit with, or that could be available to me if I take you know. Option number one, option number two, option number three. If it were all just built in, we could compare apples to apples. But I have a feeling cruise ships like it this way. They love the idea of having that three ninety nine for a Caribbean cruise. I dare you to find it on our website. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I don't know if you're going to find it. <laughs> Richard Kormaski in Europe <clears throat> tipped on meals 15 to 20%. Oh, my gosh. They came over and almost kissed me. Or give me free after dinner drinks. Such smiles on their faces. Even at Burger King, got my food before others. <laughs> yeah, Richard, you're you talking you're talking serious stuff here. If you're dropping tips in Europe where you don't necessarily have to, or where again it's built in. Uh, yeah, uh, I know that uh, in Germany, for example, if you go to a German restaurant, I mean like a traditional, you know, German restaurant. Let's say in Berlin, uh, take a look at the waiters and the waitresses in the restaurant. Uh, I dare you to find uh, high school age or uh, college age kids serving you meals at uh, at uh, you know restaurants that the locals go to. I'm talking about the locals. Uh, you're not going to find high school kids in those restaurants. They can't get a job in there. Do you know why? Well, the reason is that the employee, the the, the server in a in a restaurant in Germany, they're making uh, forty fifty thousand dollars a year. They're getting a living wage. They don't get tip money additionally. It's already built into the food prices. They also get six weeks holiday a year. They get full medical. They get, they got a pension plan. There are people who work as waiters, servers in restaurants for their entire careers, and they're respected in their community. They don't have to uh, uh, you know hope and pray that the minimum wage plus you know four or five dollars extra tip money will get them by, and it doesn't get them by. I mean, if they're you can't raise kids on that. These folks have families. You've got husbands working as waiters for 40 years from age 20 odd until age 65 in various restaurants through their entire careers. And they buy a house. They have a car. They take vacations. They put kids through school. That's the European way. In, in North America, we treat servers as slaves. It's true. It's a starting point in life. We tell our kids, well, this is a great way to get your first job and you'll learn experience on how to make some money and, uh, you know, treat people right. Well, yeah, except when you run into the individual where you're you're serving that person or two or three people at the table, five people, and they're asking for this and they want some extra ketchup and they want this and they want the, not so much ice in my iced tea and you're taking care of them and the bill is $85 and they leave a $4 tip and they're gone. And that took an hour and a half. Uh, is that fair? Well, that's a life lesson for the kids. I can tell you, I had my daughter tell me about some very interesting life lessons uh, about people that really stiffed the bar. And uh, and they would come back. They would come in every third day. And the, the servers are looking at each other going, who's getting this guy? Who's getting this guy? And, oh, that's bad news. But... Such is the way of the world, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, it, it is the way of the world. Am I ranting today? I hope I'm not coming off ranting today. I'm, I'm generally a very happy guy. <laughs> uh, Paul Prince is saying, do people who prepay their tips get better service? Apparently it says on your information that you prepaid. Very good point, Paul. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I, I would, oh boy, I'd love to talk to someone in the industry, the cruise industry about that question. Uh, if there's anyone watching that's in the cruise business or knows the answer to that, please answer that question for us. That's a very good point. Um, I don't know. Uh, I will say, though, the way Richard is saying it, you give them a $20 bill. You give your room steward a $20 bill when you're just unpacking your stuff. 
you got a good cruise coming. You got a you got a great seven day cruise coming. Uh, Doreen saying always prepaid. Never felt I was treated any different. Randy Lucas, hi there. Randy Lucas from Paradise, California. High of forty eight degrees. Randy, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the clan. Uh, if you're if you're back, you're back. If it's your first time, it's your first time. You're always welcome, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, Richard Kormaski says yes. Cruise people know if you've removed tips uh, from your account. I don't know what the impact is. The old toothbrush in the toilet bowl or things in your food. Uh, well, you know, there are people who will remove the tips right at the end of the cruise. I was on a uh, on a, a Mediterranean cruise with my daughter out of Southampton, England, and we went through the Mediterranean, ended up in Barcelona. On the last full day, which was which was the 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 day before we were finished, we had been to uh, we had been to uh, Monte Carlo, Monaco, and then we had that evening until the next morning we got to Barcelona. All that afternoon, all that evening, and the next morning, uh, there were people at the uh, hotel, the services desk, in line. There were lineups of Brits, mainly Brits. I hate to say it, but it was true. And these Brits were looking to reduce the tip charges, which were 12 bucks a day. Um, they were looking to either eliminate them or cut them in half or whatever they were doing. And I found that heartbreaking. I really did because uh, these these kids, these these people on the cruise ship. I mean, I I have my room steward is forty five years old, uh, family of four. You know, uh, sending home money every two weeks or whatever. Uh, it was really sad to see that. And, and I don't know how many of the you know passengers of all the passengers were on. I don't know how many, but for what ten hours there were like ten people in line for ten hours. And there were four or five people tending them at the counter to handle their affairs. Now, maybe they were just paying their fare, pay, paying their their table charge or their their uh, weekly, you know, their 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 expenses for their cabin fees. Uh, but I, I I did hear a lot of these folks talking to each other in lineups and uh, at the restaurant. I could overhear it, and I could overhear that they were gonna. Oh, no, I'm not paying that. I'm not paying that every day on this cruise. No way, because in Europe, so much is inclusive. We're here. It was a North American line offering a cruise. This cruise ship had come from Hawaii over to Europe, and it was now uh, doing the Mediterranean area. And it was being operated like a year, like a year, like a, a North American cruise line. And so it was a cheap fare with the tips added or suggested added. And uh, these folks, I think, were taking advantage of the fact that in Britain we don't do that, and we we uh, take it off. And they felt offended by it. So I don't know. I hated to see that. It really bugged me. Um, uh, Scott Batchley says, "Hi, Randy. Uh, you live up to you live up by my brother and niece. Hey, saying hi to you, Randy. Uh, steaming bean. If you can't afford to give your room steward ten or twenty bucks, then you shouldn't be cruising. Uh, I kind of go with that. Yeah, I'll go with you there. Uh, Michaela Smith. Uh, that's not very nice of them to remove the tips at the end. Steaming bean. No, it is not. And uh, like I said, it 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 happened. It 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 was happening bigly." <laughs> Okay, I got a second question for you guys today. I think we've we've depressed ourselves enough on that. <laughs> Let's move on to another topic, and I hope this topic is uh, a little bit of a happier topic. Uh, what item did you buy on shore when you went on a shore excursion, or didn't buy that you should have bought on an onshore excursion? On any uh, on any cruise you've taken, did you did you pick up something on shore that you just feel so good about all these years later, or did you buy something and thought to yourself, oh, "I'm such an idiot. Why did I do that? Why did I buy that and bring it back home with me? What was I thinking?" Or was there something on shore that you were looking at and you were thinking about it and you were contemplating about it? But ultimately, you decided, nah, I'm not going to buy that. I, I, I've decided, nah, I'm not going to buy it. And you've been kicking yourself in the rear end ever since for not doing it. You should have bought it. You didn't do it. And now you're going, damn it. I should have bought that in Cozumel, Mazatlan, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Barcelona, wherever you were, whatever short excursion you were on, was there an item that you did, you got, you shouldn't have got. You're glad you got. Boy, I should have got. Why didn't I do that? And uh, I'd be curious if you have any thoughts on that one. I, I mentioned it to my wife today, and she said, oh, yeah, that's a good topic. Because 
She said, well, you know my, you know the item I'm most proud of. I said, I do know the item you're most proud of. Uh, as, a good, as a good, attentive, listening husband, I know exactly what my wife is thinking all the time. I hear everything she says. I never forget a word. I always do as I'm told, and I pay attention to every little thing she does. I do. Uh, she, uh, <laughs> we were on a cruise in Mexico, our first ever cruise with our buddies. We were in Mazatlan and we were in downtown Mazatlan and we got into the sort of the artsy area where all these curio shops are selling nicky nacky stuff and whatever. And she found these leather masks that were made and one was a happy face and one was a sad face, kind of the theater, the theater look. And she bought these green leather, about a foot wide and about eight inches high, happy, sad, combo faces. She bought these two, <clears throat> these two items. <clears throat> I think she paid 10 bucks American for each one of them. They've been hanging on the wall in wherever we've been living, uh, wherever we moved to, they come with us and they're still hanging on the wall today and she loves them. And uh, I, rem I remember that. That was close. I, I did remember that today. <laughs> so I stayed out of trouble today. What is your uh, best, worst, or item you never bought? I'm kind of curious to see if I got any uh, comments on this one here. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, let me see here. A couple comments. Okay, so at the very end of it, um, uh, Randy says, out of my almost 20 cruises on several lines, I've never reduced tips or felt like I did receive poor service. Good point, uh, Randy. I, I feel the same way. I, I felt I've always got value for my money, excellent value for my money, uh, and I've been very happy about it. Uh, the Steaming Bean says, not sure which is worse, waving the tipping or losing a hockey game on sh in shots. <laughs> I know what you're referring to. Pardon me. Uh, he's referring to the women's... Hockey game last night between the Canada and the United States. Uh, the two teams inevitably meet for the final game uh, at World Championships and Olympics. And it went into overtime. And nobody scored in overtime. So it went to a shootout round. Five players from each team, one shot each. They were tied at two goals each at the end of five. Now they had to go to a sudden death shootout round. And the American gal scored a beautiful goal. The Canadian gal didn't score. And the Americans won the gold medal. And so, unfortunately, the gold medal of hockey had to be settled on a shootout rather than just a goal in, in regular play. These two teams are so evenly matched. They're almost always tied at the end of the game, and it goes to overtime, and usually they settle it in overtime, or it has to be this time a shootout. It's the first time in Olympic history that a women's gold medal final had to be decided by a shootout because that's how evenly matched these two gals are, and they were both up for a fantastic game. And I was tired last night because that took a long time. <laughs> Uh, Steaming Bean, my last cruise was in 2015. The only souvenir I bought was a t-shirt from St. Thomas. That was it. Nice shirt, and I wear it often. <laughs> Doreen Chapman says, uh, uh, well, us Canadians are sad for losing a gold in a shootout for sure. Randy Lucas, several high-quality watches. Very happy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Very happy. Uh, Steaming Bean is saying shootouts is like MSC smelly ships. <laughs> Not all that happy, right? Yeah, not all that happy. I'm going to take a break here and just mention to everybody, it's now uh, about an hour into the show. Uh, those of you who are watching me for the first time or, or just joining us now, I know some folks joined late because they work and they're kind of coming into the show. Thanks for joining Traveling with Bruce. This is my YouTube channel. This is my daily live stream. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I'm a YouTuber that is presently unmonetized. Uh, I reached 1,000 subscribers two days ago but I've been demonetized. So you didn't see any commercials today on my videos. You won't see any until I'm remonetized. The only way you can support me on YouTube is a tip jar. There's a tip jar. If you wish, you can send me a dollar, $2, $5, $1,000 uh, by hitting the dollar sign and sending me a little donation. If any of you want to do that, I would be most appreciative, but you're under no obligation to do so. Uh, that's my commercial for the moment. <laughs> Thousands, 1,091 subscribers since we hit 1,000 a couple of days ago unbelievable i love it uh we're going to be at 2500 by the end of march that's my prediction 2500 subscribers unbelievable it's growing great the question is 
if you've been on a cruise and you went on shore, did you ever buy anything on shore that you're so proud of, that you just adore, you, you love, you're so glad you did it? Or the opposite, you bought something on shore and you thought, what a moron, why did I do that? I could have bought that thing back home or over here for half the price. I got ripped off. I'm such an idiot. Or you didn't buy something. You could have bought something, maybe in Cayman, maybe in Jamaica, maybe in Rome. You could, you didn't. You, you didn't buy something when you had the chance on this outing, and now you've been kicking yourself for years because it's been years since you've been back, and you didn't buy it. I'd be curious to know if any of those three apply to you, and uh, what are your thoughts on that? I'll tell you a story quickly. I was in uh, – this was in, I think, Bruce, I think it was St. Martin, or Saint, not St. Thomas. St. Martin. It was in St. Martin. My wife and I had uh, gone downtown, uh, Phillips, St. Phillipsburg, where the beach is, and you can rent a uh, you can rent a um, you can rent a couple of loungers, and they have an umbrella over your head, or the lounger has an overhanging shader over it, and then you can buy a bucket of beer if you want, uh, like six beers for twenty bucks, or five beers for twenty bucks, or ten bucks, whatever it is, and then they tend to you on the beach. You can do that downtown. We just chose to walk around down there. And we, we walked a couple of blocks inland a little bit, kind of went around. Having lived in the Cayman Islands, I was curious to see, is it kind of similar to the Cayman Islands for the locals? It is. It's very, very similar. And um, uh, we ended up at a bar uh, right in the downtown area. And we just watched people walk by. It gave us free internet because uh, I had my Diet Coke. My wife uh, had a red striped beer from Jamaica. And that was great. But anyway, we then walked back towards the ship. And uh, we still had about three hours to go before we really wanted to go back on the ship. And we came to a bar. Uh, that had a lot of music playing, and, and and they had a beautiful kind of a giant, it's like a giant cabana. It's an open air bar, and um, and it looked really lively. We, we sat right at the bar, just right at the bar. I had my you know, Diet Coke with a big wedge of lime in it, and my wife was enjoying a cocktail, and uh, we're talking to the staff, and the serving staff were walking by and saying hi, and it's just a great atmosphere. When, uh-oh, a server walked by me, and she stumbled a little bit, and she dropped a, a bottle of ketchup that uh, that the lid was a little loose on, and it you know how you compress a bottle? It's like a plastic bottle, and the ketchup squirted out, and it hit me. <laughs> and I had a white shirt on, like one of these, and it, I got ketchup here, and some on my face, and I got, got hit. <laughs> it didn't hurt, of course. It was just, uh, you know, a little bit. Well, the bartender, oh, no, and the servers immediately went and got... Uh, you know, a Serbia, like a like a cloth napkin, and and one was wet and one was dry, and they were helping me get it off and get the stain out and all this sort of thing. And I said, eh, no big deal. I'm easy going. I'm on a vacation. What do I care? Having a good old time. Well, the manager came by a few minutes later when she found out what had happened. She was horrified, and she came over and she apologized and she said, "Your tab is on the house." So maybe twenty bucks with you know a couple of drinks. Wonderful. And then she came by and she said, I've got something for you as a, as a, as a you know, apology from the establishment. Gave me a T-shirt. Uh, they offered me a T-shirt from the establishment. So I got an extra large T-shirt. I want to say it's the turtle bar, but I'm not 100% sure if I remember that anymore. Uh, and that was a nice little gesture because they were selling them over there for 20 bucks a piece. <laughs> so they gave me a T-shirt. I'm sure it cost them three, four dollars, but whatever. I'm a happy guy. And uh, made for an interesting story. And uh, that was my little story of something I got for kind of nothing, <laughs> except for the ketchup thing, which I think we were able to wash off. Anyway, that's my little thing that I was able to bring back. Um, the steaming bean shootouts are like smelly ships on MSC. Richard Kormaski, I buy a magnet on each stop of the cruise port. Look at my fridge and I smell, smile at all the good times we've had not buying t-shirts at all at all the hard rock restaurants now see there's there's an affordable way to acquire trinkets from the cruise that you can enjoy forever just as long as you got a metal fridge and there's room on the fridge you put on another one of these magnets that's a great idea richard i think that's a smart move richard lucas happy wife happy life that's right that's right since 76 yeah that's right doreen chapman i get magnets everywhere we stop to laugh out loud see there you go gaily yes i bought three large jars of grape jelly as we pay three times as much over here in, in england yeah i mean sometimes you just see stuff you just say, well at home this is going to cost me a fortune 
I know my wife and I, uh, she, she wanted to buy some rum. We bought duty-free rum on board the, uh, the uh, um, uh, Royal Caribbean uh, Explorer of the Seas, the Caribbean cruise. Uh, we bought these big bottles of, of, um, of uh, boy, I can't, I'm having a tough time to bark, uh, <laughs> Bacardi. <laughs> Bacardi rum. We bought a, each bottle, bought a big bottle. Eleven dollars, something like that. Ten bucks, like it was a really good deal in Canada. Fifty bucks for that size bottle. Fifty. We brought one back each. Great deal. Love that. Uh, steaming bean. Oh, how magnetizing! He's saying. Sylvan Forest. I toyed with the idea of buying a Lalique crystal polar bear in Saint Martin. I left it there, and I now regret it. It was marked down at four hundred fifty dollars. It was. Uh, must have been. Something pricey. Very interesting. So full of music, 100. I bought headphones so I didn't have to listen to my wife. <laughs> Did you think of buying headphones for her? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, when's the divorce? Uh, when, are the, uh, when are the proceedings? <laughs> or are you single now? Uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> Sherman Mercer, we bought black coral in Cozumel, really pretty. We bought coffee in Jamaica and it's really good. Yes, there's some brands you can only get at certain ports, certain spots, certain countries that if you know your stuff, yeah, you can get stuff you can't get at home. Very good. Uh, Randy Lucas, I buy a bottle opener at each port or country. There, well, there you go, bottle, you know, for the bar. Uh, great idea, cheap and portable. Paula K. Uh, after being bombarded by every jeweler walking down Main Street in St. Thomas looking for watches, I ended up buying a, a Tanzanite and Amethyst bracelet from a tribal-looking man. He gave me a song and dance. Sold. <laughs> there you go. You got a little show with the deal. Why not? Uh, the Steaming Bean. Bruce is hyper and a Jack Russell Terrier yet drinking diet caffeine coke. Where does he get his? energy from where where <laughs> is it desperation is that is that what it is? is it coming through am i am i trying too hard today <laughs> glenn latour that's your story and you're sticking to it yes sir you figured me out i i uh, i have a story and i i i'm there for her i'm totally dedicated everything she needs Everything she says comes in here. Sometimes goes over. It comes in here. I, I hear it. <laughs> Sometimes it retain. I retain it. What can I say? Um, Excel Lospo in Tokyo. I bought some jewelry in Florence on my last cruise. I'm glad that I bought it. What I regret not buying is more gelato because it was so good. Uh, I was in Florence with my daughter on the uh, on the Norwegian Jade for a daddy daughter cruise that I took with her, uh, and we were in Florence and the um, the sh the stores with the leather goods. I was really impressed by that. I, I uh, went through a few of them, not too many, maybe four or five of them, and you come in the door and you can. You smell that smell of the of the high end leather. Uh, they've got they had the purses, the men's wallets, the uh, the jackets, the uh, the, the uh, bracelets. Uh, they had just you know unbelievable works of leather. The, the artistic quality of this product it was just stunning. With the prices, I didn't find the prices to be uh, in my range. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> A little out of my league, but oh, I enjoyed looking at the. Um, at the goods that they had available. I could see why, uh, you know, uh, uh, travelers from around the globe uh, will visit Florence, whether it's a holiday, like Italians just going to Florence for a weekend or uh, travelers from Europe coming down for a five day, a one week visit. And then cruise, cruise passengers like myself being on a tour, you know, on the old bus and bus loads of us every day coming in from the port off the Mediterranean Sea and, and spending our three to five hours in Florence and these merchants were were making money off of us and i was kind of thinking to myself i have this feeling this 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 deep feeling that these goods are available here but if i were to be further away from here 
in the burbs, maybe um, some other parts. Maybe I could find these goods for less, but I'm in the tourist zone, and it's kind of eh, and the prices just didn't agree with me, and I just I didn't buy anything. Cheers to the caffeine-free Diet Coke. Um, let's see here. Um, a steaming bean. Bruce, are you wearing a Calgary Stampeder shirt? Uh, uh, yes, I am. Calgary Stampeder Football Club, CFL. I am. Indeed, I am. This is this shirt. Uh, I love this shirt. Uh, it's got to be uh, 10 years old. It, it's, it, it, it just doesn't wear out. It's it's the what the coaches wore in 2007, 2008 or so. The coaches wore these shirts. These are what we call sideline wear. Top quality, thick, thick material. Love it. Just love it. Uh, but it's a Stampede shirt. Yeah. George McGrower, in answer to your three questions about onshore purchases experiences, my three answers are yes, yes, and yes. Thank you, George, for that. Very detailed, very to the point, very concise. And it was extremely helpful to all of us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, my. Charlie Bomb, I bought a t shirt in Mexico. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, uh, I'm going to say neat. <laughs> that was neat. Uh, but I can't wear it because it's inappropriate. Oh, <laughs> well, I, Charlie, uh, you know, he, he, what you buy, what you, you know, you may not be able to wear it in certain parts of town. Okay, I get you. Richard Koromaski, we we're going to stock up on coffee in Costa Rica during this cruise. Didn't buy much last time. You figured it out. And, you know, yeah, pick up some coffee there at a good price. Uh, not a bad move. George McCrower, remarkable about uh, – Tanzanite. 30 years ago, the Caribbean jewelry hawkers claimed the world supply was almost uh, de depleted. So buy now. Curious? Curious or not? Yeah. Hmm, how is that? Why, if it was rare then, is it still available now? And it's 50% off today. Why Why is that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's odd. Um, <laughs> Joshua Watson. Sorry, Bruce. I'm at work, but I'm listening to you. Joshua, no problem at all. How you doing? Good to have you. Bye. Uh, I think we've been playing uh, messages back and forth. I think you're going on a cruise. Caribbean cruise, if I'm not mistaken, um, and you were asking me about the difference between a regular balcony and an aft uh, Vista balcony, uh, and I recommended you take that wraparound Vista balcony because uh, it looks awesome. There's some YouTube videos on it. You should check them out. Absolutely. Sherman Mercer, uh, Coke Zero has less caffeine. Well, yeah, but caffeine-free diet Coke has no, no caffeine. Z zero. So I'll go with mine. Um, steaming bean. Bruce, Calgary plays great football each season, but uh, but they smell like the MSC cruise ship at the, during the Great Cup. Yeah, they make it all the way to the game, like to our little Super Bowl, the Great Cup, and then they lose it. They go 15 and 1, or 15 and 2, and 16 and 1. They win their divisional final game, they go to the Great Cup, and then they lose to the underdog. It's it's bad. Two years in a row. Uh, it's a frustrating thing, but the shirt is the shirt. I wear the shirt. What can I say? Uh, one more thing I'm going to mention today that I was going to mention uh, anyway, but uh, you folks didn't know anything about it, but I came across uh, an announcement that I thought was kind of interesting, kind of cool, that might appeal to half of you, a third of you, none of you. Just mention it uh, for, for those of you out there. And again, for those who are newbies uh, who've never cruised before or you always thought about going on a cruise, I saw an announcement today. I have to I've talked about this topic a little bit before. When, re when it comes to what kind of a cruise should you go on or what kind of cruise shouldn't you go on, whether you're an active cruiser, a new cruiser, it doesn't matter. There are some cruises you just want to be on and some cruises you might want to think about going on. Uh, this is a, a, a country music cruise. It uh, looks like this is the sixth annual or seventh annual country music cruise. It's on the uh, Holland America, Neu Amsterdam. Nice ship. Uh, it's uh, January the 27th to February the 3rd in 2019. This is not this year. This is next year, uh, 19. And uh, Jeff Foxworthy is the host of the uh, the event. He's the master of ceremonies. And uh, apparently uh, it goes from Fort Lauderdale to Key West to St. Thomas, Half Moon K, which is the private, uh, the private K. Um, and uh, it's already 70% sold out. It sells out every year. They probably have 2,500, 2,800 passengers. They have all kinds of meet and greets, autograph sessions, uh, performances all over the place. Uh, people get to meet their, you know, some of their favorite uh, favorite um, performers. And I looked up uh, who was coming, and I, I downloaded it on my phone. I'm just going to read to you here. Oh, sorry, this is the sixth annual. Uh, it'll sail with the Oak Ridge Boys, Patty Loveless, 
Ronnie Millsap, Ricky Skaggs, Joe Duffy, the Bellamy Brothers, Shannon Doa, Jimmy Fortune, Johnny Lee, David Ball, TJ Shepard, Jenny Seeley, Wade, uh, Wade Hayes, Chuck Mead and his grassy knoll boys and the Elvis tribute artists hitting the seven stages on board the ship, revered, te revered television and radio uh, show host Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Crook returns to MC the cruise and back by popular demand will be a very special Grand Old Opry at sea performance event. Well, if you're a cruise, if you're a country fan, this is this is right up your alley. Um, the uh, the guests on the ship will have uh, unprecedented uh, opportunities to meet and mingle with the stars aboard what has become called the ultimate country music party. In addition to more than fifty live performances, cruisers can mix and mingle with their favorite artists at theme nights, panel discussions, cooking demonstrations, jam sessions, meet and greets, autograph sessions and more. The nonstop entertainment extends to excursions and performances in exotic ports of call. So they're going to be performing when they get on the land as well. Fantastic. Uh, a fantastic idea. The uh, cruise has sold out every year since its launch in 2014. Fans quickly embraced the experience, a combination of the very best in country music and vacation of a lifetime. Pretty good idea. Uh, again, if it's, in, it's up your alley, it works. And if it's not, it's not. Uh, but I found that to be kind of cool. If you want information on it yourself, you're in, you're, you're in any way interested, go to this website called countrymusiccruise.com. Free commercial from me because I'm not being paid to talk about that. But that's uh, that's a pretty neat uh, – that, that is a kind of a neat cruise idea. You know, you've got some, uh, you know, people who, you know, we know of <laughs> who've uh, sold a lot of records. And if you're a country fan, and there are a lot of you out there, I know it. That would be a pretty cool cruise. And you get a Caribbean cruise on a Holland America ship, and the food is awesome. Not a bad gig. Anyway, so that I, I mentioned that one today. I just kind of saw that today. I thought, oh, I mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steaming Beans. Teasing. He's teasing me. He's saying, go Ottawa Red, Black, Ottawa Red Lights. Uh, he's saying, I hope that in the near future there will be more TV channel choices. I cruise during Canadian football season and would love to catch games on my cruise. You know, a buddy of mine took a, a repositioning cruise from uh, Tampa over to Southampton last year on the Norwegian Jade. And that was a 13-day cruise or something like that. Actually, it was Tampa all the way to, to Southampton. Anyway, it was during NHL playoff season. Uh, the NHL playoffs were on. And he was wondering whether he would be able to see any of these games. Well, it was unbelievable. He said it was on every day. I, I couldn't believe it. I'd go by the sports bar, and on these big screen TVs were these NHL hockey games. And they were on at uh, ungodly hours because as every day went by, they were moving into a new time zone, heading over to the UK, and the the game would start at you know whatever time, eight o'clock uh, Pacific time. Well, and he's now four time zones off of New York, heading for the UK. Uh, his time, he said, I had to get up at different times all the time if I wanted to see these games. It was uh, kind of crazy, but yeah, they had them right out in the middle of the Atlantic. They got NHL hockey games, playoff games for the Stanley Cup. So yeah. Uh, Deb Boy is saying, uh, Debbie's saying, love Holland America. And uh, yeah, that would be uh, that would be a good, it's a great line. I, I love it very much. Anyway, so there you go. So I think I'm going to wrap this up today. I'm going to thank everybody for coming out today. I hope you guys were able to give me some thumbs ups today. Got 20 today. Thank you for 20 thumbs ups. Really great. We'll add those to our uh, to the meter and we'll let YouTube, uh, you know, process the thumbs up and uh, hopefully engage the channel with more people and that type of thing. Um, uh, Pamela Jordan saying, hey, just going on a left field, I'll, I'll laugh a lot. Has anyone ever seen any celebrities on your cruises? Uh, yeah, I, I personally have not met a celebrity of any note on a cruise yet. Uh, be curious if any of you folks have. Um, uh, uh, Galeas saying goodnight, goodnight, Galeas. Um, yeah, that maybe we'll bring that up tomorrow. We'll, we'll mention that. We'll think about that. And if you ever have, uh, we'll talk about that then. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. I'll be on at 5 o'clock Eastern again. And we'll talk uh, again about cruises and deals and what's going on out there and any stories that are going out, whether there's any fist fights overnight on cruise ships. We'll talk about that. Uh, I hope you've had uh, a good time. Uh, Bruno Gerussi, the steaming bean is saying, Canadian actor. <laughs> Bruno Gerussi, a star. Nah. <laughs> oh, my. Betsy Lane is saying, my husband is a small celeb. Patrick uh, uh, Rakoff saying, Atlanta, checking in first time, live, 71 degrees. Patrick, you're checking in just as we're getting ready to go off. It's great to have you here. Uh, sorry you're kind of missing the show live, but you can see the rerun here shortly. 
Uh, Paula Kay is saying good night already. Uh, and Betsy Lane, Mickey, uh, Desad, Desad, Desadist, Des, Desadist, Mikey, I can't, I can't, I'm having trouble today reading folks because I stayed up too late watching that female football game. I met Marty Allen once on a cruise. Does that count? Good night. He just died last week. Marty Allen, great comedian. Ah, fantastic. Uh, hilarious guy. Uh, that counts. That counts. Yeah, yeah. My dad had a steam bath in Las Vegas uh, with uh, Siegfried from Siegfried and Roy. Met Siegfried. Austrian guy. Dad spoke German. He spoke German. They had a lovely chat, a lovely visit. Uh, Betsy Lane is saying, Forgotten Rebels. She saw the Forgotten Rebels. Patrick Rickoff always watched the re reruns. Suggested, suggest, suggested the late show yesterday, Laugh Out Loud. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, I'm, I'm contemplating this, whether to... Uh, uh, have a I have one show a week at a later time. I'm wondering if that might help some folks catch us. Although the five o'clock time is pretty popular amongst those of us who are here, I'd be curious to get your responses. I'm going to ask this again tomorrow at the beginning of my show when I catch everybody kind of coming in, and I'm going to ask them if they have any thoughts on uh, if I were to do a later show that aired maybe at seven in the evening Eastern time instead of five. If I did one of those a week, uh, would that be able to uh, accommodate folks who are watching me on reruns? I'd be kind of curious. Anybody have comments on that? Leave me comments below on this video when it posts. Uh, you can just you know send me a message anytime you want. But we'll see what uh, we'll see what we think. All right, uh, where are we at now on the likes? 21, 24 likes, one dislike. Uh, well, I got twenty five reactions. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll take that today. And uh, thanks again for watching today. Um, uh, Pamela's saying, we saw Sinbad on the cruise terminal when we were getting off of the Oasis last June. Hey, Sinbad, pretty cool. That's Sinbad. Uh, or at least you saw him. <laughs> There's bodyguards probably all around him. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, meeting a celebrity on board. I don't know if you'd meet very many. Uh, they're you know, they're going to be in the nice rooms, likely. Uh, they're going to have security, perhaps, likely. And so they're going to be in those exclusive, you know, hiding places, perhaps. Uh, and you, may not, you may or may not catch them. Uh, they're not going to be in the buffet. Uh, no way. They'll never get to eat. They'll never be able to eat the buffet. Bye-bye, Bruce. See you tomorrow, says Debbie Manuel. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, guys, I'm going to pack it up right now. I'm going to set uh, set this down and um, and say good night. Patrick, thanks for joining me at the end. I'm sorry uh, you only cut this much today. Um, we'll see you guys all tomorrow. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a good day today. We'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. It's Friday. Bye.